Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to a new video. Trying out a new thing here. Uh, we'll see how people like it. If people are into it, I might uh, invest a little more into it. Before this video starts, I want to say, mention the uh, the 5,000 subscriber uh, milestone. I didn't actually realize it uh, while I was making the last video. It shows how much I pay attention. Uh, but we actually managed to cross uh, 5,000 subscribers on the channel, so that's... Uh, unnerving uh one of the things i always liked about my youtube channel is that no one was watching it uh and now people are but that's cool uh i'm glad uh people are seeming to like the stuff i'm uploading and we'll uh we'll keep going mainly because the comments that i've gotten on the channel are amazing incredible every time i upload a video and i'm doing something not even wrong but just like not maybe the best way someone's there in the comments to let me know and it's like made my use of Linux a whole lot easier. And and as a result of that, uh, I've got a comment someone left on the last video I made about gaming on Linux saying, hey, like, uh, you're really not doing much to optimize the performance on Linux, which is true. I, I really wasn't. I didn't know what we could do. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, we established that gaming on Linux is, is quite easy. Uh, there's a native Steam app built right in that makes it super easy. You enable a Proton and you're, you're all set to go. But there's a lot more we can do to uh, optimize this. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, real quick, same situation as last time. I've got an affiliate deal with PureVPN. I assume everyone watching this channel knows what a VPN does. If you don't want one, great. If you're in the market for one, as far as I can tell, PureVPN seems to be a really, really good, secure, solid option. So, hey. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh! Whiskey. Yes, this is a celebration. So I pulled out what I think might be my most expensive bottle. Uh, the only thing that might be slightly more expensive is the Lagavulin 16 year back there. Uh, but uh, this is the Talisker Distillers Edition. It's just a great scotch all around. Uh, I love the Talisker, the Talisker Storm, the Talisker 10 year or 12 year, whatever it is. And this is something special. Cheers. Thanks for 5,000. That's everything I remember it being. Okay, so when we're playing games on Linux, uh, the first thing you need to do is install the native Steam app. We've been over this. Uh, if you're not super familiar with how to do that, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, what you can do, uh, assuming you're on Arch Linux, is you can, I believe it's in the AUR. So what you'd wanna do is yay, dash S, and install Steam. Uh, not terribly difficult. If you're on uh, Ubuntu or something like that, I think it's apt install steam something like that it might be in the snap store stuff but if you're having any trouble figuring out how to install it <laughs> leave a comment the people leaving comments on these videos are awesome so if i don't answer it i'm sure someone else will uh all right so once you have steam installed any of the games that are built to run on linux by default so for example let's say i've got a couple here uh, i've got this mad max game that works on linux out of the box we've got shadow of the tomb raider and we've got rise of the tomb raider those both run on linux by default any of those games will just let you play immediately but all of the other games in your library which are like me are quite a few that only run on Win windows won't give you the option to install play anything makes sense right now well it's easy to fix you go up to steam you go up to settings you want to come over here to steam play down on the bottom enable steam play for supported titles enable steam play for all other titles and then pick basically any of these proton branches i was sticking it on proton experimental and having pretty decent results with that you hit okay you restart Steam, and then once you've done that, you can come over to something like GTA, a Windows-only game. It'll give you the option to install. Halo gives you the option to install. Uh, what's something else here? Destiny is a Windows-only game. Install. Lego Star Wars, you get the option to install it. And getting it running is super, super easy, as we established in the last video. It's You basically just install it. When you hit play, it'll do some stuff with Vulcan shaders and Proton and get the game running. And I had very little trouble getting any of the games to work, or so I thought. Uh, in the original video, I was playing Skyrim and I noticed the FPS counter didn't seem to be accurate, like at all. It was telling me I was getting 60 FPS and it was the choppiest thing I've ever played in my life. And then, while we're on the subject of Skyrim, as soon as I unplugged my microphone here, uh, I realized that there was like no game audio, not no game audio, but like I had music in the background of the game and some sound effects, but no dialogue. Uh, and, and, and a lot of the, it, the audio wasn't working properly, which led me down a, a nice little rabbit hole. Uh, thanks to the people who left me comments uh, telling me how to fix it. Uh, and the first thing that we want to take a look at is inside of Steam. 
we go to Steam, we go to Settings. Right here above Steam Play, there's this nice option, Shader Pre-Caching. We click Enable Shader Pre-Caching, Allow Background Processing of Vulkan Shaders. And what will happen here, if we come over to the Downloads page, Steam is going to download and pre-cache shaders and, and textures and things for all of the games that we're going to play. So this is basically every game that I have installed right now. Uh, what that's going to do is is basically fix the uh, stuttering issues that I was having in the game. Apparently, the FPS counter was correct. I was getting 60 FPS-ish, but the textures weren't loading in properly, so it was looking odd. It just wasn't a good gameplay experience, and this definitely did fix it. We can go a step further. As with most things on Linux, there are the official drivers and software, and then there's this really great community of open source people that create just frankly better versions of the drivers and software. Uh, so in the case of Steam, you've got Steam, Valve working on these Proton uh, drivers, the Proton emulation using Wine uh, and the Vul converting it to Vulkan textures, converting DirectX textures to Vulkan so that they'll run on Linux. Uh, and then you've got people who are super more into gaming than probably the people at Valve who create third party drivers. Uh, and that's what we're going to take a look at here. We're going to take a look at something called uh, Glorious Egg Roll or uh, Proton GE Custom. This is exactly what it says. This is a third party version of Proton, which in my experience works great. Um, I, I was talking about that issue I had with Skyrim where the dialogue wasn't working and I was doing all sorts of Googling to like try to figure out how do I get it to work. There were like people telling me, you know, go into FA Audio and uh, do all this stuff with wine tricks and, you know, change these specific files and how they're interacted. I installed this, it worked perfectly immediately. Uh, so let's go ahead and install that. Now, if you are on good old uh, Arch Linux, uh, good news for you, uh, right in the AUR, if we search for egg roll, uh, there is a Proton GE custom package, uh, and that's all you need to do to install it. You just do yay, dash S, Proton GE custom. Uh, now, if you're not on Arch Linux, there's a pretty decent chance that you're gonna have to sort of manually install it, which isn't too bad. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that just in case you're not using Arch. Uh, so you're gonna go over to installation. It'll give you manual instructions right down here. Uh, you're gonna go over to the releases page. Uh, you're gonna download right down here. We don't want the source code, we want the Proton 6.4-GE tar file. Uh, now, before we do anything, you're gonna need the tar program to extract this. Uh, so if you don't have that, uh, use whatever package manager, manager you're, you've got. Uh, in my case, I would do like pack-s tar, and then I'll install the tar package. It's super small. You just saw how long it took to install. And I mean, I already had it installed, but it was re-downloading it, I believe. So let me uh, go ahead and close out of these other windows here we don't need. Uh, while this is downloading, what we need to do is create a directory here. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to cd into local share steam. Uh, what we want to do now is make a directory and call it, what are we calling it here? It is compatibilitytools.d. You know what? I'm bad at spelling, so I'm just going to copy and paste this right here. And that's probably maybe the safest way to go. So make that directory. Once we have that directory, we can CD into it. And then once that is done downloading, uh, all we need to do is extract it into the uh, this folder we just created. So uh, I guess we could use a uh, sort of graphical file explorer here just to make things a tiny bit easier. Uh, so I've got PCMANFM here. If we go over to downloads, we can should be able to right click, say extract here, and uh, it should extract. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know what the, uh, the issue there is. Okay, uh, cool. So maybe we'll just extract it on the command line. Uh, so what we could do is CD into our downloads. And then I think it's tar-xf is what we need to do. Yeah, and we'll just select that file. It'll take a minute. You can like pipe it through. I forget what the program name is to get a progress bar, but it doesn't take too terribly long. Uh, and then what you've got here is just a Proton GE folder. Uh, you're gonna wanna copy that. And we're gonna go to the location we just created, which if you remember is home slash Mac uh, dot local slash share. And then we're gonna go into Steam. And this is the compatibility tools folder we just created. And we're just gonna paste it in there. It's as simple as that. Uh, you then want to go over and restart Steam one more time. And then when you do that, you're gonna have the option to Steam Play run all of your titles through the Proton GE uh, Glorious Egg Roll version of the software. It's gonna tell you you need to restart. Go ahead and restart once you do that. 
And whenever it opens back up, we're now going to be running a much more optimized setup for gaming on Linux. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at actually what playing games with Proton GE looks like. Let's pick a game we want to play here. Let's try uh, maybe Rise of the Tomb Raider. Why not? Or... Let's try this Star Wars Squadrons game. I haven't played this too much yet, but what I did play was fun. We're gonna hit play. Uh, I think it's already downloaded and cached the shaders for this particular game. We'll give it a shot and see. Uh, and this is actually a weird testament to how good the gaming has gotten on Linux is I was doing benchmarking, going back and forth between Windows and Linux and running my benchmarks. And while I was doing that, I just happened to notice that there was a, a, a deal on the, um, the Star Wars game. So like, uh, all the new Star Wars games, the Battlefront games, the Squadrons game, one other one that I think is called Jedi Fallen Order or whatever. Uh, I noticed that there was a deal on those. I didn't even switch over to PC and try to run them. I just downloaded them while I was on Linux, testing out the other games and played them immediately with no issue whatsoever. Uh, a couple other weird things here. Uh, I, I didn't realize this because, again, as I said about a million times, I'm not the biggest gamer in the world, but VSync will lock your FPS if you're using a 60 hertz monitor, which I am on these two. I've got a higher refresh rate monitor here. So what you got to do is go into the video settings and turn off vertical sync or V-sync or you won't get an accurate FPS number. I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, but anyway, so let's just talk about the other numbers. We've got Skyrim on Windows. I was getting 60.9 FPS average uh, on Linux. It's 59.817. Um, I mean, kind of the same there. Uh, Halo, I was doing the Halo CE version. Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, I was getting 138 FPS on Windows, 135 on Linux. Okay, not too big of a deal. Doom, we're getting 68 on Windows, 63 on Linux. GTA, I was actually getting... GTA, there was actually a decent performance difference. I was getting about 130 FPS on Windows and only 90 on uh, Linux. That seems weird to me. Uh, same thing with uh, Minecraft. Big big difference 278 on pc 253 on linux uh the mad max game we talked about 57 on linux 64 on windows and then i threw in brawlhalla just a dumb little simple uh fight combat game i was getting basically 60 fps in both situations i think 59.9 on linux technically or on windows technically and just 60 on linux so i think there is a a, a measurable difference in performance but what I think is important here is I'm not using the best graphics cards I'm using the uh, 1050 Ti uh, kind of an old graphics card not the best graphics card uh, but I'm getting playable frame rates here on all of these games and I'm getting an experience that I'm totally fine with here I'm you know I'm getting anywhere in between 60 and 70 ish FPS here in the squadrons game. This is a pretty new game. Probably not the most demanding I should maybe try to run cyberpunk on here. See how we do but uh, Like I'm getting totally playable frame rates with not that much effort So at this point like I'm pretty comfortable to say like I'm a I'm a Linux gamer I'm not really a gamer to begin with but if I'm gonna play a game There's no sense in my head to restarting the whole system booting into Windows just to play a game for a few hours when I've got access to my whole Steam library here on Arch and I can run it. I think I'm probably about to die. I've gotten so far out of the target zone here, but whatever. Uh, you get the point. Oh, one other thing I wanted to test before we go. Controller support. That's not a controller. That's a boot. Um, I play with a controller relatively frequently on uh, Windows and I totally meant to test the controller on Linux in the last video and I just totally forgot. When I play on Linux, I... I mean on Windows, I just plug it in in Windows 10 and it works fine. So I was kind of hoping to see what's, what, what, what the situation here is on Linux. I'm going to, I guess we'll open up the game. I, I don't know if we're going to have to like manually set the controls or what. Uh, but I know I play with the controller on GTA all the time on Windows. So we'll see how it goes on Linux. Hey, there we go. That's a game. All right, cool. So go into the settings here and uh, we'll come over to gamepad and uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like everything's working. It picked up that it's an Xbox controller and everything. So let's just, uh, I don't really know what people usually do in this game. I usually just drive, drive to the casino and spin the wheel and then quit. Uh, but uh, let's, uh, let's see here. So far, everything seems to be working well. I don't think you can pull out your guns in the house, but uh, let's see here. Uh, let's get a car here. Let's get out here where there's some pedestrians and we can try and fix some stuff. All right, cool. So that's a nice car. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, let's try and see if the aim assist works here. If I can find a pedestrian. 
there are no pedestrians. Maybe we'll just wait for the cops to show up and then I'll try to fight them. All right, come on, boys. Come on, let's fight, let's fight, come on. Okay, good, so the like auto-aim thing in GTA seems to be working. Yeah, I think uh, controller support is there. This is uh, basically plug and play, plug and play. Same type of situation we're getting on Windows there. So hey, there we go, that's, uh, that's a video. That's another one. Second video of 2021, only took me three months, almost four. So hey, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for Talisker for being the first whiskey on camera on this YouTube channel. If there was gonna be a first, this is a great one to uh, to pick if you're into Isla Scotch at all. Or even if you're not into Isla Scotch, it's not like a super overpowering Isla Scotch. If you're into any sort of whiskey with interesting character, check it out. If you're looking for a VPN, pure VPN. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. See you in the next one.